Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are adding binturongs to the Elm Hill City Zoo. The binturongs are one of the animals added to Planet Zoo with a new Southeast Asia animal pack, which was released at the beginning of this week. We got 8 new animals and now we are adding the first one to our Elm Hill City Zoo. I chose the binturong to be the first one added because of several reasons. Firstly, I think that binturong is my favorite animal of the whole pack. I mean, it is super unique and it is beautifully done. I also love building habitats for climbing animals, so I couldn't wait to build a habitat for binturong. Also, I had this small area between small mammal house and the penguin house empty and I decided that it will be perfect for a small habitat like the one we can build for binturongs. Before this DLC was announced, I actually planned to add here ostriches or kangaroos or just leave this place open with some forest. But now I decided that it will make perfect sense to add the binturongs in this place. Also, the binturongs are basically small mammals. But we didn't have any more spare space in the small mammal house. So I just couldn't add them to the small mammal house. So building the enclosure for them near the small house made sense for me. This habitat will be quite modern so we can imagine that it was added to the zoo recently after the small mammal house was already built and there wasn't any more space for additional animals so this whole enclosure with this shelter was built especially for binturongs recently in our zoo. This habitat and this shelter were actually inspired by binturong habitats in Madrid Zoo. I found this habitat while looking for some inspiration for binturongs enclosures and to be honest at first it appeared to me to be very boring and plain. But after a second thought I decided that I really like this shelter and it was something that will perfectly fit to our zoo. So I decided to recreate it but to also make this habitat my own twist and make it much more interesting and entertaining for animals and also much more natural with many plants and climbing structures. I will put the link to the photo of this habitat in Madrid Zoo down in the description to this video so you can guys see by yourself what I am talking about. So the habitat in Madrid is also lower to the ground so the path and viewing points for the guests are above the actual habitat. Thanks to this the guests can get perfect view for the animals and also while the animals climb they are more or less on the eye level of the guests which is very cool. It was actually the shelter that convinced me to recreate this habitat because I really like this concept of the grass growing on the roof of the shelter and I also enjoy this modern concrete look of it with those oval shapes on the lower part. I think that those round shapes make this building look very unique and also very interesting. I created them as you could see from limestone trims. Those trims are actually very useful in this game because they are off grid and you can create many many things out of them. You can fill in the gaps in the buildings, you can build very thin walls if you need to build something like this. Because even the smallest plaster piece is one meter wide and if you need something smaller you can just use those limestone trims, turn them around because they are flat on one side, put them next to each other and you can basically make any shape you want in any size you want. Also, while building those round columns or round shapes, I showed you guys the easiest way of building round shapes in Planet Zoo. The trick is to use this matte column because it's the only grid piece which is round now in the game. You need to place this column and then add the piece that you want to create the round shape with 
join the column and the piece in one group and then copy it over and over again, every time rotating a bit. So step by step you are basically creating a circle. Then all you need to do is just delete the columns, select all the pieces that are left and that you use to create the circle or, or half circle and then join them all together to one group and that's how you basically build a circle shapes. I hope that this description was clear. I actually have a tutorial planned for you guys. I would like to record a video with my favorite building tricks in Planet Zoo and I for sure will show you guys this in more detailed way in this tutorial as well as some other tricks that I used often. I saw some comments from you guys, some of you would like to see such tutorials, so, so I think about recording one and it will be out probably in a near future. I only found uh, photos of outside part of this shelter, so I didn't have a clue what's inside, so the inside part is my own creation, it wasn't inspired by anything. I knew that I wanted to create something that the guests will be able to walk in because just as I told you guys many times while building small mammal house uh, we are building in temperate biomes so we have changing seasons there is winter when the temperatures are really cold and the binturong is also one of tropical animals so it will probably have a very hard time surviving those harsh temperatures. That's why it would probably be closed during those colder months in the inside part of the habitat. So I wanted to make this inside part also interesting for animals, I mean entertaining. There will be some uh, climbing structures, some plants and I wanted to the guests to be able to walk in and see them even in the colder months when they are closed in there but you'll be able to see it by the end of this video. Right now, as you can see, I'm focusing on the barrier. I mean, it's basically a wall for animals. It is very steep so they cannot climb it and escape. And there's also a barrier for guests with a railing. I love building uh, barriers like this. I mean, when animals are a bit on the lower level than the guests. Uh, because I think that it creates a very natural view for the guests for an animal without looking at it through the you know actual fence. Whole habitat looks much more open and spacious. Actually, while building those barriers, I showed you guys another trick. So you probably all had like an issue where you want to copy and move the building or a piece and it moves in weird you know angles it doesn't move straight the world axis is you know in this different very weird angle and the easiest way to fix it is actually to add a piece to the group that is a great piece you know just as a piece of wall or any other piece that has this you know like hashtag on it in the corner in the menu and you can basically hide it under the ground so it isn't visible and adding this piece to the group automatically fixes this issue and from now on by copying this build this building or this group uh, you can move it straight and it gets much more easier especially when you're a perfectionist like me and you want to have everything super straight and even. Also, what was very useful for me during this build was a chisel tool. I mean the terrain tool, which is basically used to push the terrain a bit in the angle that you want. It was super useful while erasing the terrain which was sticking out of this roof of the shelter and also now while building those uh, barriers there was also a, a lot of uh, terrain like sticking out and only by using the chisel tool uh, you, I could just push the terrain to hide it a bit more inside those barriers or inside the you know walls of the shelter 
and it was very useful and helpful. So if you are not friends with this tool, definitely go and say hello to it because it can really make your life easier in this game, especially when you are playing a lot with terrain. As we all know, placing paths in this game is challenging and especially placing them near uneven terrain like here you know this whole habitat is basically in a ditch so i couldn't place the path as uh, close to the actual habitat or this barrier as i wanted to because the game didn't really allow me to do it and that is when the plaster pieces come in handy because you can basically add them at the level of the path as I did here and cover the places when there is no path so it looks like the guests still will walk over it and there is no terrain visible so thanks to this it all looks more clean and I'm sure that in real life the real guests would be able to actually step on those plaster pieces this last week was actually quite a week for me and the entire Planet Zoo community. First of all, the new DLC is out and from what I've read, you guys really seem to enjoy it. I for sure enjoy it very much. I love new animals, I love that we have 8 of them. And to be honest, it doesn't bother me that we didn't have any more construction pieces. I'm sure that we'll get more of them in future DLCs, but we already have so many that sometimes I have trouble with choosing the right one for my builds. The animals that we got with this new DLC are very cool, very well ma made. I love the models, I love the animals that they actually decided to choose because they are very unique. And also they are animals that actually you see in zoos around the world. So adding them made total sense and every addition to the animal roster is very exciting for me. And you know, in real zoos, I mean big city zoos, we have several hundred of species of animals. So the variety of what you can see there is like is wonderful. Right now in Planet Zoo we have like a bit more than 100 species I think, which is also amazing, but I would love to see even more. I'm sure that my computer wouldn't be able to handle a large city zoo with 100 uh, species, but I really want to add as many as I can. It was also quite a week for me because actually Planet Zoo released their monthly roundup where they showcased my channel and my video again so i am super grateful because i know that after it was released many new people joined so hello thank you for joining and i hope that you will enjoy watching my videos so thank you planet zoo team again for supporting smaller creators like me i am super grateful and this is basically so cool, thank you so much. Also, as you guys may know, I started to play another game on this channel, I mean the Prehistoric Kingdom, the Alpha uh, Edition. I already released two videos of Prehistoric Kingdom, and last time we added the first dinosaur to our park, it was Teracosaurus, I built a lovely canyon for them. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link on the screen and in the description to this video, uh, so definitely go and check it out. Because this video was actually retweeted by Prehistoric Kingdom, and they included it in their devlog, where they shared some information about what they're working on, what will be added to the alpha, what will be added to the beta, and they also showcase some work of the creators. I mean some screenshots and free videos. And the videos were by me, I mean my Stereocosaurus habitat, by the lay designer and by Rudy Renkamel. If you follow them, you probably know that they have tons of subscribers, their channels are huge. 
So I was super grateful that Prehistoric Kingdom decided to showcase my video among those huge, very popular channels. And this is also so cool that they support smaller creators like me. And to be showcased with those huge names is a real honor for me, so thank you, I'm so grateful. And also, I would like to welcome all the new faces that subscribed after my video was showcased there. Thank you guys so much and I hope that you will enjoy all my videos. By the way, new Prehistoric Kingdom video will be added very soon. As you can see, I already started to work on climbing frames for animals. I actually wanted to challenge myself a bit and try to build those frames from other pieces than those traditional logs that we have for climbing. Because actually many other objects in this game are climbable for animals. I mean, they're mostly wooden objects, wooden pieces. So I used a lot of branches, I used a lot of ropes, uh, planks and so on to create, you know, very interesting playground for Binturong so they have some entertaining space to, you know, climb, run around and I'm sure that in real life the animals would actually spend a lot of time on those crime frames because they actually spend a lot of their time in the trees. Unfortunately, there is something wrong with my game after the new update. I mean, for sure there is something wrong with Elm Hill City Zoo. I didn't check it in any other saves or I didn't try to create another zoo to check it out. But my animals simply stopped climbing. They spent all their time in on the ground. I checked their traversable area and and everything is perfectly fine, all the, you know, climbing pieces and climbing fra frames are green, so basically they should be able to climb them, but they simply don't do it, and I don't know why. So, unfortunately, you won't be able to see the Binturongs use their climbing frames. I am sure that they can, because it's all green but they simply don't do it and I can't, then there isn't any like way to force them. The same goes for my koalas and for uh, red pandas. They also stay on the ground and don't climb. I know that there were some improvements to the climbing mechanism in this game with the new update, but uh, unfortunately those improvements like destroyed my climbing in the Elm Hill City Zoo and I hope that it will be fixed because how would we be able to add, you know, monkeys, apes and those kinds of animals without climbing frames? Did any of you have similar issue? Maybe you have some solutions that worked for you? If you know something that can help me, please comment down below and Maybe you will be able to help me because I run out of ideas on how I can fix this issue and I'm hoping for a new update that will fix it somehow. As you can see, I decided to change the log that I added before. I added, you know, this log that we have from the beginning in the game. I changed it for the fake uh, log which was added in an aquatic park because uh, you can actually add those roots and thanks to this I think that it looks super natural and uh, just simply better. I actually added, I mean copied this fake uh, tree and like moved it very slightly and changed the color of this uh, additional tree to a bit brighter one. Uh, and thanks to this, I gave a bit of dimension to this and texture to this log because when you choose the color of it, it's like it looks a bit unnatural because it's just one color without any variations and so on. And by adding another one and moving it very slightly, you get this texture and it right away looks a bit more natural. Okay, I think that it is time for our fun facts. So if you've been watching my previous videos, you probably know that in every video I try to give you guys some fun facts about animal that we are currently adding to our zoo. So today's fun facts are about binturongs. 
So you may have heard that binturongs are sometimes called bear cats, but actually they are not closely related to bears or cats. Their closest relatives are civets and genets. The meaning of the word binturong is unknown, the language it was diverted from is now extinct. The binturongs actually smell like buttered popcorn, which is rather funny. They have a special scent glands, which are located under their tails. When they move, they drag their tails and they mark branches and foliage on their territory. And to humans, the smell is reminiscent of butter popcorn. But to other binturongs, it communicates that the area is occupied and they should move along. Binturongs make a lot of noises to communicate. Binturongs live high in the forest canopy and rarely come down to the ground. I actually wish that they did it in my zoo. <laughs> They're excellent climbers moving slowly through tree branches. They have very strong feet and claws and they even sleep in the trees. They have prehensile tails, which means that they actually can grab branches with their tail. So even when they are sleeping, their tail is anchored securely to the branch of the tree. The binturongs have very important job in the forest where they live, uh, because they help spread the seeds from the fruits that they eat simply by pooping. <laughs> Fortunately, binturongs are listed as vulnerable. They are currently in risk uh, due to habitat destruction, poaching for tra traditional Asian medicines and the fur and pet trade. In some areas of the world, they are considered a delicacy and are hunted for their meat. So basically they have a very similar story to the pangolins that we added to the small mammal house, which is very sad. The association of zoos and aquariums has actually established a species survival program for binturongs and many zoos around the world that house them are part of their alliance to help them. They breed them and they try to reintroduce the small binturongs back to the wild and I'm very hopeful that they will succeed. I already started to add plants to this habitat. This time finally I could go a little more crazy with the plants because basically the binturongs won't eat them so I wanted to give this habitat a very lush feeling. There are a lot of bushes, a lot of smaller plants. In Madrid Zoo, uh, they actually don't seem to have any plants in their habitat, just some logs where they can climb on. So that's why I wanted to improve uh, the habitat and add a lot of plants to give it very natural feeling so that they can hide in the bushes if they want to or can climb some trees. And I really love how this habitat has turned out in the end. With a new DLC there was actually also a free update release and it gave us very cool new features. The one which was very useful for me is the zookeeper traversable area because sometimes I had problems with placing you know, enrichment items in the places where keepers couldn't reach it. So now basically we can see all the traversable area of the keeper inside the habitat. So if there are any issues, you know, there are some places when they can't cross, we can simply see where it is and try to fix it. So this is very, very cool and very useful, especially when it comes to those very detailed and smaller habitats or habitats where there is a lot of water because keepers in this game simply don't swim. Also, I love the fact that we can now change the color of the water and change, you know, the level of visibility. I changed it right away for all the underwater viewing uh, areas, galleries in the Elm Hill City Zoo. So now you are able to see much clearer, you know, the seals that we have, the penguins, the giant otters. Because the before the water was pretty cloudy, 
so the animals have had to be very close to the glass uh, for the gas to see them clearly and now basically the gas can see all the swimming areas for animals without any problems also changing the color of the water is very cool because for example our giant otters, their inside part of the habitat is very like tropical, inspired by the Amazon forest. So I could change the color of the water to more like a greenish one. So it looks more like their natural water that they have in their, uh, you know, habitat in South America. So this is also very, very cool. But my favorite thing in the entire update are the custom billboards. I'm so happy that they were added and I'm so happy with how they work. The possibilities with those new billboards are basically endless. You can customize your own info boards, you can make menus for restaurants, you can make, you know, prices for tickets to hang on the walls by your entrances. You can advertise new attractions or new habitats in the zoo. And even as I saw many people do it now, you can upload there a video of, for example, a fish tank. So now we can even have aquariums in the game because you can simply, you know, build it inside the wall at the movie or a video of uh, a fish tank. And you will have a very realistic tank that you can display in your zoo. Also, I've seen people uh, put them, I mean the billboards on the ground, build some, uh, you know, terrain or rocks around it and upload there a video of a pond with a lot of fish so that, you know, it looks like a koi pond or something like this. So as I told you, like, possibilities are like endless, you can make uh, backgrounds for habitats, I mean, for example, rainforests for, you know, tropical animals. So you simply can upload everything to them and this is very, very cool. You will also be able to see uh, my creation for uh, billboards in the cinematic shots at the end of this video. I created some info boards for Benturong, so definitely stay till the end so you can see them. What is very useful for the, your creations, for the billboards, is the website called Canva. It is basically a website where you can create your own uh, like graphic designs, mostly for you know postcards and social media and so on. But it's very, very, very easy to use. So you can create your design for custom billboards very, very fast. From now on, I think that I will add my custom billboards, I mean custom info sign for every uh, habitat. Because I think that it adds a lot of realism, like, you know, every zoo has some information about the animals. I mean, definitely more info that we have on our education boards that are in the game. So yeah, I will try to add them. I actually think about, you know, going through the whole zoo once more and add them everywhere that I can now. Maybe I will do it at one point, but I have so many videos planned now for the future that I don't know if I will have time, but uh, I will try and add them because I think that it's, it's for me, it's a game changer because it adds so much realism and adds this you know much more organic feel to the zoo and i want that a lot so i will definitely go and add them to our zoo in my billboards i used some drawings of binturongs that i found on google graphics i will add the sources of uh, those drawings in the description down below so they are not my drawings i don't own them so i would like to give you know shout out to people who made them and maybe you guys would like to use them as well so the link will be down in the description in the inside of the binturong house i used more of the tropical plants because simply uh, they will be able to survive inside, you know, when there is warmer. I also add a lot of climbing frames for animals so that they are entertained while spending winter in here. 
I also added those horizontal poles because I saw somewhere an animation that the binturong actually can hang down on its tail and I wanted to see it very much but unfortunately as I told you guys my binturong simply don't climb so until it isn't fixed <laughs> I won't be able to see them do it but I have really high hopes that they are just lazy and they will start to climb soon. As I told you before, inside this house there will also be uh, animal talks. I wanted to add animal talks because we only have one by now in the zoo. It is by the grey seal habitat. And the binturong for me is such an amazing and interesting animal that I think that it deserves to have those talks about it. So yeah, there's a nice place for the educator to come and tell guests some, you know, interesting facts about binturongs. You will also be able to see it on the cinematic shots by the end of this video. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build and don't miss the cinematic shots at the end of this video if you want to see this entire habitat. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see me build more of those realistic zoo habitats, new subscribers really help my channel to grow and I am very grateful for each and every one of you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have simply any recommendations on how I can improve my future videos. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!